Hello everyone, I'm Ms. Nicole. I am the Youth Services Librarian at the Cape Coral Public Library. And this is Coco, who is clearly paying a lot of attention. What are you doing, Coco? And I am here to tell you guys a special story that I was told when I was very small. And it's the kind of story that is called a folktale, huh, Coco? And Coco's wondering, what's a folktale? What's a folktale? Well, I'm gonna share with you what a folktale is. It's a special kind of story that gets passed down from generation to generation. <laughs> and usually they are not often written down, but they're told in stories. And so they often change because they're told person to person. So they change with the telling. Oh my goodness, I've lost Coco. Coco is gonna go sit on the table over here. That is her new favorite spot. So you can just about see Coco over there. <laughs> oh, Coco's back. And so, for my grown-ups in the audience, telling stories is a great way to help kids with their early literacy skills because learning new meanings and new words at the same time is often really tough for kids. So if you can relate words to them in a meaningful way, like in a story, that will help them remember them when it comes time for them to learn to read. So we're gonna have some new words that go with this story, folktales, one of them. So. And I'm gonna tell you about that a little bit more, but first we're gonna sing the hello song. But before we start, I want everybody to wake themselves up, so I want you to all wiggle. You ready, Coco? We're gonna wiggle. Wiggle, I want you to wake everything up. Wiggle, shake, 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 shake. You feeling it? You feeling it, Coco? Yeah, yeah, you feeling it? Whoa, shake it all up. And then we're gonna sing the hello song really slow to begin with. So here we go. You ready, Coco? Sing with me. Hi, hello, and how are you? How are you? How are you? Hi, hello, and how are you? How are you today? Good job, guys. That was excellent. And now before we go and sing it a little bit faster, I want you guys to pretend like you are a big, delicious bowl of jello in the fridge. And I want you guys to vibrate like your jello. You know that beautiful wiggle that they have? So get everybody ready and go, whoa! Can you feel yourself being jello? Whoa! Is everything woken up? Whoa! Coco is not feeling, <laughs> feeling the jello spirit. If I had jello here for her to eat, I think that would be different. And now we are gonna sing the hello song one more time, a little bit faster. Here we go. You ready? Hi, hello, and how are you? How are you? How are you? Hi, hello, and how are you? How are you today? Good job, guys. That was awesome. And before we sing the hello song one more time, we're gonna chew it super duper fast. So I want you guys to take a deep breath in with me to get ready. So everybody deep breath in and let it out. And one more time, deep breath in and let it out. There you go. And give me one more deep breath in. Take it in and let it out. Here we go. You back, Coco? You ready? Oh, Coco wants a belly rub. Oh my goodness, Coco. <laughs> Coco's gonna sing the hello song with us super duper fast. Three. One, two, three. Hi, hello, and how are you? How are you? How are you? Hi, hello, and how are you? How are you today? <laughs> I think Coco thought that was supposed to be super duper fast kisses. Was that kisses, Coco? Was that what that was? Good girl, Coco. And now, before we move to the story, we want to sing Make Your Arms Go Up and Down. So you guys know this one. You ready, Coco? We're going to make your arms go up up and down, up and down, up and down. Make your arms go up and down, just like me. Now once you make your hands, make your hands go up and down, up and down, up and down. Make your hands go up and down, just like me. And now I don't wanna to move too much with my legs because I will chop off my head, which is not fun. But you guys can lift your legs all the way up if you're sitting down on the floor. So I want you to make your legs go up and down, up and down, up and down. Make your legs go up and down, just like me. And now last time, we're gonna make ourselves go up and down. So 
I'm gonna just kind of bunch up my shoulders and like move a little bit because I don't want to chop my head off. But you guys jump all the way up if you can. So everybody all together, make your body go up and down, up and down, up and down. Make your body go up and down, just like me. Oh, I think Coco's taking a nap because she's getting ready for this story. So I promised you guys I was gonna tell you a story that is a folk tale from Bermuda, the little tiny island where I grew up. And Bermuda is very, very small. If you look on the map, it's just a little pinprick out in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean. And so this is a special story about a special fish that lives in Bermuda. And that fish is called a bream. And what's really special about this fish is that, other than the fact that it's really lovely, look at that, isn't, isn't that bream just beautiful? She's just gorgeous. But a bream is a special kind of thing called endemic. And endemic means that it only lives in one place in the whole entire world. So you can't find bream anywhere except in Bermuda. And they even have a special name called Diplodus bermudensis. And part of that special name means that you find them in Bermuda. And so years and years ago, people in Bermuda would look and you find bream, they like to eat things on the bottom of the ocean floor. So you find them a lot around docks and in shallow water. So Bermudians would see them swimming and they would wonder, how did they get this spot on their tails? Look at that, isn't that really unusual? And nowadays kids, we know that this spot actually is something that the bream uses for a little bit of camouflage because it looks like an eyeball, a really, really big eyeball. So if the bream is swimming around, another fish that might think, mmm, that bream looks tasty, might see this and go, whoa, that's a big fish. Look at that eyeball. And decide to not eat the bream, which is, you know, which the bream would really prefer. I think all of us would prefer not to get eaten. And, but back in the day, people didn't know why things like this happen. So they came up with a story to explain it. So way back, I'm gonna tell you the story now, way back when Bermuda was just a very new island before there were any people living there, the bream was the most beautiful fish in the entire ocean. They were, she was just so silvery and shiny and gorgeous, just like moonlight. And she was very, very vain which is a word that means that you think that you are all that in a bag of chips. And sometimes that is not entirely true, but you think that. And so the bream did a lot of bragging and telling the other fish, oh, look at my beautiful scales. They're so lovely and gorgeous. And the other fish, as you can imagine, got kind of tired of that. And so they told the bream, you know what? Just buzz off. We are tired of you. Swim off somewhere else. And so the bream decided to swim away in a bit of a huff and swam all the way to the edge of the reef. And when you get to the edge of the reef, I don't know if you guys have been swimming out near coral reefs, but what often happens is the coral reefs are in very shallow water, which means that they're not very deep, but often on the other side is very deep water. And there are often a lot of very big fish and other very big things. And so the bream swam all the way out to the end where more sensible fish didn't like to go because living near there was, and I'm gonna have to ask you guys to use your imagination because my octopus is not very big, but there was a very big, dangerous, hungry octopus. Look at that, Coco. Did you see that octopus living there? And the bream was in such a huff about how rude all of the other fish had been that she didn't see the octopus slinking out in a cloud of ink. And I don't know if you guys know this, but octopuses actually do have ink and they can splash ink into the water and make a dark cloud so that no one can see them. So it's like being invisible. And so out of the shadows crept the octopus. And the octopus looked at that bream and that bream looked mighty tasty. Mm. And the octopus thought, ooh, I'm going to have myself a nice lunch. And the bream was swimming along and didn't see. And the octopus reached out its inky tentacles and went, oh, 
Oh no. And the bream is so scared. Everyone, oh my goodness, can you imagine having a giant octopus reach out and grab you by the tail with its inky tentacles? Oh no. And the bream struggled and struggled and struggled <gasps> and finally broke away from the octopus and swam as fast as she could, which was very fast because the bream were also very fast swimmers. And she swam as fast as she could back to the more shallow inner reef. But this time, she was a little bit less vain than she was before, especially because now she had that inky fingerprint from the octopus's tentacles where they had grabbed her by the tail and she had to struggle and struggle to get away. And ever since then, whenever you see the bream, they have this little inky fingerprint there. So if you guys ever go to Bermuda, and you see a fish with a fingerprint right there on the edge of its tail where an octopus grabbed it. You'll know that is a very special fish that you will never see anywhere else in the whole world. So isn't that quite special? So that was a, the kind of story that you might often hear in folk tales where people wondered, why is something like that? So I hope you guys enjoyed that story. That was told to me when I was very small. So I'm telling you guys the version that I heard, but there may be floating around Bermuda many different versions of this story that other people have heard. And that's the special thing about stories is as you share them, they get special and more personal details. So I hope that if you have any special families in your family or any special stories in your family I mean that you guys will share them with each other and enjoy them together and maybe learn some new and fun words as well so don't forget the special word we learned today which was endemic which means something only lives in one place in the whole world and sometimes endemic is even smaller than that sometimes endemic is something that lives only in one cave in one place in all the world which is pretty cool. And you also learned folk tales, those special stories that get passed down from generation to generation. And there are many folk tales that you can find the roots of in many different countries. So when they studied folk tales in Bermuda, they could see some of them had traveled from different places and they could find versions of those stories in the places that they had come from, which is pretty darn cool. So stories travel around the world just like people do. Anyway, before we go, I'm going to teach you a new fun song. It's called One Little Red Fish, but I'm going to change it to One Little Silver Fish because we have a silver bream. And it goes like this. One little silver fish swimming in the water, swimming in the water, swimming in the water. One little silver fish swimming in the water. Bubble, 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 pop. <laughs> and you could add more fish if you wanted. So if you had more fish on hand, I only have this one, but you could have two little silver fish swimming in the water, swimming in the water, swimming in the water. Two little silver fish swimming in the water. Bubble, 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 pop. <gasps> what was that, Coco? Oh my goodness, did you guys like that song? That's one that I really enjoyed when I learned it. And then now I'm gonna sing one that I think you guys know very, very well. But I thought since we were telling fish stories today, we couldn't do without singing Baby Shark. So you guys ready? Coco, are you ready? Coco's having a nap while we sing Baby Shark. Come on, Coco. Here we go. Baby shark, do 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 do. Baby shark, do 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 do. Baby shark, do 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 do. Baby shark. Mommy shark do 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 do. Mommy shark do 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 do. Mommy shark do 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 do. Mommy shark. And then what about Daddy shark do 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 do. Daddy shark do 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 do. Daddy shark do 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 do. Daddy shark. And then what about Grandma? Grandma shark do 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 do. Grandma shark do 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 do. Grandma shark do 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 do. Grandma shark. Grandpa shark do 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 do. Grandpa shark do 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 do. Grandpa shark do 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 do. Grandpa shark. Uh oh. 
Let's go hunt do 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 do. Let's go hunt do 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 do. Let's go hunt do 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 do. Let's go hunt. <gasps> and then, little fishy, see the sharks? They go. <gasps> Run away to do 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 run away to do 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 run away to do 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 run away <gasps> And then when they escape the sharks they say safe at last to do 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 safe at last to do 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 safe at last to do 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 safe at last Whew. <laughs> And then we can't forget one last round of Baby shark do 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 do. Baby shark do 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 do. Baby shark do 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 do. Baby shark. Woo hoo! <laughs> that song is so much fun to sing. I hope you guys had fun with that. And now we are almost done with our story time. Coco, did you want to say goodbye to everybody? Let's see. Coco, do you want to say goodbye? <gasps> Coco's gonna sing. We wave goodbye like this with us. You ready, Coco? We wave goodbye like this. We wave goodbye like this. We clap our hands for all our friends. We wave goodbye like this. <laughs> oh, Coco. Should we sing it one more time? <laughs> and if you have a puppy, they might kiss you goodbye too, huh? Coco. <laughs> you ready, Coco? We wave goodbye like this. We wave goodbye like this. We clap our hands for all our friends. We wave goodbye like this. <gasps> goodbye, everybody. I hope you enjoyed this story time. See you soon. Coco, say goodbye. Say goodbye, Coco. Oh, good girl. Mwah. Good girl, Coco. Bye, everyone.